What's up everyone? My name is Marissa and I am super excited to offer you guys these divination sessions today. We are diving into what surprises other people about you. I'm really excited to switch it up a bit. We've been deep diving into all types of soul blueprint types of readings, so I'm excited to offer something a little bit more lighthearted. All right, so we have four piles to choose from today. We have pile number one with the mouse. We have group number two with the sea serpent number three with the buffalo, and group number four with the cheetah. You can always pause this video if you need more time to marinate. Otherwise, we're going to hop right into these sessions. What's up, group number one? Here is your reading for what surprises people about you. So on this side, we kind of got going on the energies of like the, what surprises people about you. And over here, we have the contrast of like what it is that they expected. So uh, interesting that we had two Eight of Cups. I am using two different um, Rider weight decks. I just felt like fun, you know? I mean, because they look the same, but they're different, right? And so I figured something like this would probably happen. Um, so there are most certainly some crossovers of like what people expect and what surprises them about you. However, I'm seeing the place that it comes from is what surprises them when they actually get to know you because I feel like you're someone on the outside that comes across extremely confident and someone that feels like they like know what they like they have their ish together they know where they're going they feel very independent it's like you know the empress is an individual where she wants something and she goes and gets it right um and she doesn't linger you know whether you're male or female doesn't matter uh but you know just using this analogy, she doesn't linger in territories and terrain and areas and environments where she's not welcomed, where she doesn't feel respected, you know, at the very least respected. And so I feel like on one hand, people have this idea that you're very independent and um, that you won't settle for less. That's going to bother me. <laughs> that you're very independent and you don't settle for less. But I, however, I feel like what surprises people when they really get to know you is that it might come, it might be born from a place where there might be a fear of like looking bad or there might be a fear of like um, getting something wrong. You know, the mouse is, the mouse can be very like monkey mindish. The mouse can be uh, a being or an individual that, you know, overanalyzes to the point to where they won't get started on a project, right? And so, you know, with this Ace of Wands coming up in reverse, I was very, very strongly guided to keep it in a reverse position. So, you know, it's like you're moving on from new things. What surprises people, I feel like, is that they see such potential in you and they're curious as to why you don't actualize it a little bit more than maybe you do. And, you know, for whatever reason, there's no judgment here. I mean, at least on this side of the reading, because we all are on different timelines and people are always going to have their motherfucking opinions. Okay. It doesn't mean they're right. Um, but this is just, you know, what's coming through is that, you know, the, the good qualities of the, of a mouse personality is there's someone that is very detail oriented, right? This is a lot of earth energy. So someone that is very practical and not someone that will necessarily take risks, right? Uh, take risks. I feel like that comes along with the territory of like, you know, the Empress territory of someone that's won battles and lost battles, you know, someone that has taken risks and has failed and has taken risks and has succeeded. And so, you know, the Empress is a little bit more confident and a little bit more um, just versed in that area. And so, you know, with time, they, she gets, she understands, she knows what to take risks on and, you know, in terms of people, relationships. Um, business ventures, side hustles, um, vacation, you know, there's so many, there's all different realms that this could um, fall into, right? That this could apply to. But I feel like what surprises people when they really get to know you is that, you know, you might reach a point of like, you might take yourself to analysis paralysis. So when you get really good ideas and you're inspired and, you know, something wants to be birthed, something wants to come through, it's like, I feel like there's a huge block or at least a huge tendency to like sell yourself short or to not give yourself the benefit of the doubt that something could succeed. And so it's like you're walking away from a potential that was never really invested in. Whereas 
I feel like people, you know, when they meet you, I feel like they don't really pick up on this energy right away. They really on the surface get this very nine of pentacles energy of someone that seems like they're um, very weathered and someone that seems like they have like put in a lot of work. And this, I just want to make clear that this isn't necessarily anything negative, okay? Because on one hand, we have some people that are saying no to opportunities, no, 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 because it, it genuinely doesn't feel right. And that's, it's perfectly fine to honor that, right? And like, what is a missed opportunity anyways? You know, it's, if it's meant to happen, it will, you know? And we get to a point too, where so many of these opportunities will pass us by that we finally jump on one. And by the time we jump on the one who's to say, you know, that wasn't always, per that wasn't a perfectly uh, designed part of the plan that, you know, your higher self knew that you would say no, 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 no. And finally, you know, when the specific one came in, you were so tired of saying no, that you're finally like, yes, this is the one. But I feel like, you know, what's the, the overlays here and the commonality here is like going on new adventures or um, taking new journeys or saying, just saying goodbye, like walking away from things, saying no to things. Right. And so I feel like, you know, on, on the difference is on this side is I feel like there's a certain level of boldness that people just pick up from you or that they anticipate from you for whatever reason. Um, people assume you to be very bold. It can be one of those like, you know, um, rising signs, you know, they say the rising sign is kind of like pretending to be like, um, like a rising Leo or something, you know, like a wannabe Leo kind of thing. I heard one of Emerald intuition. She said something funny like that, uh, on one of her videos. Um, one of her pick a cards recently and I couldn't help but giggle because I feel like that could be a really good representation of what like the rising signs are. So maybe on one hand you're, you have a rising sign that is a sun or I'm sorry, that is a sun that is like a fire sign. And then, um, but your moon sign or, you know, your sun sign is something that is like quite opposite or, or kind of, you know, balances those, <laughs> those things out. Um, you know, you could even have like a moon sign and, and, you know, an earth sign that someone, you know, the personality of the mouse is someone that just like, um, might overthink like the practicality becomes so heavy before they even have a chance to give something an opportunity. And this could be, I'm hearing this is in relationships. I'm hearing this is in, in jobs, op job opportunities, etc. Um, but there is like a lot of potential here. And I feel like what surprises people is just like, they expect so much because you, you carry like BDE, you carry big destiny energy. They expect a lot from you. Um, not even in a bad way, but they expect a lot from you because, um, you just have very strong codes in your soul's blueprint. Like it, it seeps out of your, it seeps out of you, out of your system. <laughs> that sounds weird. This is getting weird. This became a weird analogy. Okay. But you know, it just surprises them because I feel like, you know, and just, it might be, it just might be culture shock, you know, because in our culture or in a lot of cultures these days, it's really, you know, the grind and hustle culture is very much so exemplified and like celebrated. Um, and so, you know, you just might be on a different path and that's totally fine. Um, but eventually it's like, I am seeing the crossover here is that, you know, you end up in the same place or at least you end up in like, I know I'm not seeing that the timelines are drastically different. You know, I feel like if anything, it's a journey of acceptance, a journey of like um, a big part of this might be the fact that you are very aware of this, that people expect so much from you and it feels like there might be some like uh, resistance to your own greatness for whatever reason. Sometimes trauma can do that when we're, we do have these bold energies in our soul's blueprint, but we're not able to tap into our gifts quite yet to a profound extent is because, you know, there's certain karmic propensities things that had happened, they, like blockages, essentially, you know, karma, what is that? Essentially the areas that we're still denying the light of God that exists, exists within us, the light of God, or, uh, you know, you could say universality, the great mystery, whatever, you know, the energy that makes up all things. And so I, you know, I'm seeing that it's like, yeah, and this is just surface level stuff. It doesn't necessarily mean that the, again, it's, I feel like I just need to explain that it's not negative. Right. Because again, I feel like we can have like, I've definitely been placed in this, <laughs> like I can definitely resonate with this of people being like, I've had a teacher that I really admired at one point say, you have a lot of potential and that used to, you know, I felt like it was such a backwards compliment of saying you have a lot of potential because it's like almost in a weird way, <laughs> like you're, 
like you could be great, but you're not great yet, you know, because your life doesn't look some sort of way or because you still have these traumatic tendencies and you're still a little bit, you know, have a little anxiety or whatever. And I think it's fucking fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And if anyone were to tell you different, then I feel like that's, I don't know, that's, um, I don't think that's what spirituality is. And I don't think that's what, you know, spirit, consciousness, etc. Um, is all about it's not about a big display and like being the cool kid and all of that right and putting on a front I think it really is just honoring everything about you right honoring um, your entire expression and when it's meant to blossom it will you know at, on its own time and you can't force it right so I feel like if anything if you are in this period what has you know what surprises people about you is that like um, I know I deeply feel for pal number one. It's only a matter of time before you're embodying this. But right now, it, it seems like there might be some inhibitions or blockages due to maybe past experiences with this mouse being, um, you know, immersed in darkness or you know just from having a lot of endings in general in your life. And so, um, and two, this could just go to show where other people are operating at. You know what I mean? Of like, okay, you have so many things coming your way but you say no to a lot of things well um that's there's you know if you're saying no because you're waiting for the right yes then you know that that's great <laughs> you know that's what we all should be doing is not saying yes to every opportunity or like lover or you know anything that passes us by and really waiting for that you know deep internal click that deep internal knowing that this is right for me and that this is right for my path yeah it's interesting too because i am seeing like even within this, this storyline is um, getting to the same place, like we said before. And some people expect you to get somewhere by like it looking a certain way based off of whatever, upbringing, whatever, right? Based off being bold, yada, yada, you know, um, saying yes, doing all the things. And then it's like over here, what might surprise people about you is, is you get to the same place because you know not to say yes to everything. You know what to say no to. And you know, you know, if it's not a fuck yes, then it's a no. And so I feel like there's a lot of strength and there's a lot to be said about, you know, what, where you're already operating at pile number one. Um, and why it surprises people is because you're showing a different way to achieve success. You're showing a different way to uh, be a creator of your reality and a different way to go about things. And it's not about, again, that hustle culture and just like, Ugh, I could puke, <laughs> you know, and I've been very immersed in it myself. And I'm just like, been at times I've been like, God, why the fuck did I fall prey to that? You know, I know better, but again, it's all part of the journey. And so I feel like regardless, it's like, you're going to end up in a really good place. I feel like, um, you know, the only thing that I'm really picking up here about a tip from your guides, the main thing is like to not compare yourself to other people or not to let these expectations that other people have of you kind of make you feel like you're doing something wrong because you'll get to where you need to be when you need to be there. And there's, again, there's all paths lead home, right? All paths lead home. And you're going to feel this and this when you're honoring your true nature, regardless of what the fuck other people think that you should be what your true nature should look like or what is known to them, what's familiar to them. Um, because at the end of the day, you're going to be the happiest. You're going to be the most content. You're going to be the most solid in yourself when you are just letting that reveal itself to you. And you're not, you know, rushing the haste or jumping the mill. I think I'm making all of this up, <laughs> but just, you know, doing things just and and playing a part that you think you need to play that actually doesn't feel very organic. Um, but yeah, this was honestly very beautiful for me to um, tap into and to tune in today. Uh, beautiful energy is pile number one. Thank you for joining me today. Um, if this video resonated, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below. Um, comments really help my channel grow. And yeah, subscribe to my channel if you've been here before and I hope to see you soon. Hey, group number two, if you chose the sea serpent, this is your reading for what surprises other people about you. So on the left side, we kind of got going on the surprise energy. And on over here on the right, we have um, why, <laughs> you know, like what they people kind of expected. And so just going to get right into the reading. I feel like what surprises people about you, pile number two, is your tenacity. I mean, I'm seeing with a sea serpent and the world card here, I am seeing a sense of like, you know, the I'm, I'm going to butcher this, but the Roborus, <laughs> Roborus, I don't know why they spelled it that way, but you know, I'm, I'm teaching my daughter, uh, English, not teaching her English, but I'm teaching her how to read and write. And so I'm like, what the fuck? Why did we do this to ourselves? You know, why are there so many different, why does E A and I E and E I sound like, you know, so many different ways. And it's the same 
motherfucking combination, okay? It's so confusing. <laughs> Anyways, that was a little tangent, but okay. So I feel like you eat your karma, right? I feel like people expected you, honestly, to not do well or expected you to crumble in the heat of, you know, just your lifetime. Expected you to not become all that you have been. I feel like with a spirit card too, it's like you've really taken the darkest moments and you've made them into, um, like you've become such an incredibly tuned in individual. And I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the beings that are drawn to this group are just spiritual beings in general, really resonate like very much so actively on your spiritual path, would consider yourself a spiritual person in whatever way um, that resonates for you. However, you know, at the end of the day, language and um, religions, in my most humble of opinions, they're all just a means to an end, right? Because I feel like if we all had that experience of God consciousness at the same time, we would realize, and we took away all the words, we'd realize we were all talking about the same thing, regardless of like dogma, ideologies, you know, the just the vehicle to get us there, right? And so I feel like what in your own way, pile number two, you have found a vehicle into connecting with your higher self and connecting with divine energies. And I feel like whatever you guys have been through, um, I feel like you overcame it so fast and you came into this space of like whatever comes your way, I feel like you overcome it. Like there's a lot here about like when karma comes your way, like it might be challenging and it might be obviously very overwhelming at some times, but I feel like you just like are in a very rapid path of acceleration and expansion. And I feel like like you guys feel good. Like no matter what your life actually looks like, like you guys feel good. And what I mean by what actually looks like, I mean by, you know, fucking expectations from other people, what society would say, this is what a good life should be. Like when I think about, you know, people that are living van life, like that doesn't seem ideal to like many people, right? Living in a bus by choice, right? But you know, depending who you ask, that is like a dream come true. That is a dream life, okay? So doesn't matter how it looks, but you guys feel really good within yourself and you can acknowledge how far you've come. And I feel like that's what surprises people about you is your tenacity and your strength. And um, just, I feel like maybe you weren't always like this. Uh, like maybe in some senses you were, but I'm just getting the sense of like what surprises people is about your boldness and, and, and owning it your boldness and expressing it. And this kind of like, you know, it's like a, a kind of smugness that he has on his face, but like in a good way, like I know what I'm connected to. I know what I have to offer. I know, um, you know, I, I just, I just know that something's got my back. Okay. And I just know that when I'm on a path of growth, when I'm really tuning into something much greater than myself, things just make sense. And I feel like you've had no choice, whatever you've been through in your incarnation, you've had no choice, but to look to spirit because it was like, it, I feel like you may have gone through many things that forced you onto the path of illumination, or it's like you could have very easily ended up on a path that, you know, could have killed you or on a path that, you know, at the very least wouldn't be something that you could say you're proud to, proud of. And I feel like pile two, whatever you're doing, whether, regardless if it's like at the full manifestation or if it's even close to its full manifestation, its full bloom, I feel like pal too, you can say you're very proud of the person you are today and how far you've come. And I feel like, you know, why it surprises people is because the amount of hurt and the amount of betrayal or the experiences that you had, um, that you had, it seems like you kind of suffered through alone, whether that be physically physical, you know, people couldn't provide for you or be there for you to support you mentally, emotionally, uh, monetarily even, you know? And so I feel like it's like you have had the world handed to you, like not even like in a, like handed on a platter, but like you have, I, I feel like from a young age, you had seen a lot and experienced a lot of um, trauma that, you know, is hard to make it out of at this at the level of brilliance and beauty and um, grace that you have. I feel like there were a lot of things like this kind of tells me, you know, zooming out a little bit further, this kind of tells me the story of a soul that really did come here to complete a lot of, to tie off a lot of loose ends or you came here with a great willingness to learn. Okay, and that essentially is how we undo karma and how we untie karma and how we break karma. Um, it's not retribution. It's not, you know, it's not all of these misperceptions that I feel like the West has kind of developed of like what goes around comes around. It really is just comes down to where am I denying 
where am I denying my parts of myself as being God? And where am I denying that same light in other people? Okay, and so I feel like, you know, you are a very wise soul that understood by taking on this type of, you know, baggage, this type of heaviness, you understood the probable timelines, which, you know, I feel like is probably also what why people are so pleasantly surprised, not in a negative way, but they're pleasantly surprised that you took the timeline that you did and that you have because you know, there was just as irrelevant or just as a, a possible timeline, maybe not necessarily for you, but in their eyes, there was just as strong of a possibility that you could have taken a path that was much more, um, that was much, that told a much sadder tale and a much more tragic storyline. Okay. But I feel like, again, there was this lifetime in all the ways is about completion. And, um, in many ways, I feel like it's generational karma too. Uh, because a lot of the stuff that I feel like you're dealing with within this incarnation, you know, was early childhood stuff, um, but also generational type of karma is really what's coming through strongly here too. But um, I feel like people always had hope though. And so they were like, maybe in a way, like people that were friends with you or that were family that kind of watched your storyline unfold from a young age, like always held hope for you that you would be able to overcome it. Um, but they knew that you were dealt a very, a very tough hand within this lifetime. Okay. The very tough cards and you have really impressed people. People are very proud of you. Okay. Like this is a very pleasant surprise. And even if people don't fully understand, um, you, because this has driven you into a level of depth that I can confidently say a lot of people don't have catalysts in the way pile number two has had catalyst to dive into themselves. Okay, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's quite challenging for other people to meet you and to see things from the level that you see things. Right, and this too, this sea serpent is all about the divine mother. Okay, so that could be relevant to you guys and, and to my pile number twos in some way. Um, you know, there's the divine feminine energy in general. But I feel like overall, um, I feel like overall people are just so surprised and so like they're so surprised at how you are able to be so lighthearted and so cheerful and so determined and so willing to move forward um based off of you know the heartbreaks and everything that has life has thrown your way the challenges you've been through and there's definitely um, a level, like a deep level, again, of wisdom that was born from these experiences that, you know, honestly, it's like they see how these things have shaped you and into such an incredible being. And I feel like a lot of the time people even wonder too, like, would I be able to come out in the same way that pile number two did? because you know it's just like so incredible like you're magnificent i can feel it i like feel almost i'm having to like get my emotions out of the way so i can you know stay like as clear of a channel as i can for you guys but there is such a like um a sense of pride here and a sense of like holy shit like i don't know how anyone could go through this and still be if someone with such high integrity and trusting people and loving people and wanting to do the best for themselves and doing the best they can um, all the wilts being, you know, going through all the human types of experiences that we go through being misunderstood and cast out and, you know, all of those things. I, yeah, I feel like regardless of what you've been through, even, you know, in the years where you're still felt very immersed in your darkness, people had always known you were here for really, really, really big things. Okay. And, you know, I feel like we can hear that a lot. <laughs> I don't know. I, I hear that a lot on tarot readings, um, but maybe it's just because it's a message that's meant for me. So if you hear that a lot, maybe take that as like, it's a message that's meant for you. I don't think anyone has a bigger or a lesser type of destiny, but I am saying that there is a likelihood if you were guided to this, like truly, truly guided to this, you know, pile today that you're here to make a world of a difference. Okay. B BDE, big destiny energy, right? And you are here to shine. And I feel like, you know, our strongest warriors have been through the toughest shit, the toughest terrain because it's these beings that truly can help other people out of their shadow, their darkness, their sense of like insecurities, like across the board, like financial insecurities, um, emotional, spiritual, you know, all of those things because you've been through it. I, I deeply feel like your higher self and your higher aspect knew that, you know, 
in order to truly, you know, become this and to become the powerhouse that you're meant to be, like this was like interwoven in that, like to unlock this, this had to be experienced is what I'm trying to say. And so I feel like um, you guys are on the other side. It really feels like you guys have like cleared a lot of this and have come to understood a lot of it. Again, doesn't mean the human experience isn't, you know, still gonna be there and we're still gonna have ups and downs and all arounds, but I feel like ultimately you guys have a really good head on your shoulders and you guys know what's up, you know, what makes sense to you and what sets you free and you're here to help illuminate that for a, a lot of people in a lot of different ways. I am seeing you're here to touch many lives across this globe even, you know, people from all over the world, all over the place, different backgrounds, etc., who have all been through similar things as you and who you were, you know, here to shine a light of hope for other people who have, you know, seen the darkest parts of the human psyche and made it out alive. All right. So thank you so much for being here, pile number two. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for being here. If this resonated, please do like this video. Um, comment below, maybe like a little snake or something. If you chose this, if you chose this video or this pile today and yeah, subscribe to my channel if you've been here before and I really hope to see you soon. Hey, pile number three, welcome to your reading for what surprises other people about you. So over here, we loosely have the energies of the surprise and over here is loosely the energies of like the expectations. And why I say that is because I read very intuitively. So whatever comes up in the reading is like what I, you know, there's going to be intermingling all across the board. Um, but yes, yeah, this is why it's kind of separated like this. And I do want to say, first off, I, I did notice when I flipped over these two cards, like how um, similar the energies feel, right? Regardless of um, just like, just the, the colors is what I was guided to hear the most. Um, so something about an earth moon just like came through randomly. Um, what I'm getting is that you guys emanate a certain level of peace, like what people what people get and what you actually are like you come as you are is what i'm hearing so you exude a certain level of peace the way that you've gotten there is much different i feel like that's what surprises people about you or at least the way that you maintain it or the way that you act i should say more the way that you act right because i'm sure there's you know there's going to be a certain level of introspection and meditation and etc from um you know a being that is able to exude within and have created such levels of peace that it's very obvious that my pile number threes have been able to create for themselves. So for example, we have, you know, what surprises people is that like, you are not afraid to take action. You are not afraid to put your money where your mouth is. You are not afraid to stand up for what's right. You are not afraid to go after um, what feels right for you. Like you will not get swept away by your emotions. You know, over here we do have like, this tell me, tells me because we have the queen of cups with this, why they're surprised. And the nine of cups over here is you are actually much more emotionally mature than I think people um, expect just from looking at you or whatever it is, right? I feel like you seem very um, solid. I, like it's almost like they expect a certain level of naivety for you to have this like, um, let this glass half full type of mentality. Like they feel... It's almost like people assume that to come at a level from a level of naivety and um, they assume you to be like very introverted and very to yourself. And while you can definitely have moments of that, I feel like what surprises people is your tenacity and, you know, that the only time we're able to access and activate our true power is when we're existing in this level of peace that you guys are existing within. So I feel like what surprises people is they expect, they almost expect you to show up in a way that is very, um, you know, cookie cutter of what we assume peaceful people to look like. Like they dress a certain way, they talk a certain way, they don't curse. They are very kind of like pushovers, right? And I feel like, like, you know, like let me, you know, let me lie down so you don't have to get your shoes dirty walking over this muddy path, right? <laughs> like, I feel like, that's just kind of me almost exaggerating this energy that of what they expect and what they really get is someone that is like knows their worth and someone that is yes peaceful and prioritizes peace but at the same time know what the fuck they're here for and knows what they stand for and is not going to um, bow down in the face of injustice and whatever um you know you have learned to be 
something that is, you know, something that you stand for. You won't bow down to its opposite just because everything, everyone else is doing it. It's not like everyone else is jumping off this bridge. Let me go jump off without my parachute as well. You know, before I've really investigated, is this like, is this the way I really want to go? You know, you, there is a sense of like people being very surprised at how mature you are for your age. Um, emotionally speaking, spiritually speaking, you're very intuitive. I feel like people also don't give you credit for how intuitive you are. Um, and that a big part of your success in life and what you're going to, your endeavors are because of your intuition, are because you have a really beautiful balance of the divine feminine with the divine masculine. So you do take time to marinate and to, you know, be a hermit, right? That's what, you know, that's what makes the queen of cups who she is. However, it's not like you're spending decades or like, you know, hours on end in meditation, you know, for some people, yeah, that's relevant for their life purpose, but is that relevant for everyone? No, it's not, you know, um, that's just in my most humble of opinions, not what the human experience is all about. And we're not all here to do the same things. We don't all access our power in similar, in the same ways, but there can most certainly be crossovers that we can learn from each other. Sure. Yeah, on, on one hand, it's like people ex would expect a certain level of passivity from you for whatever reason. Like, I don't know how y'all be dressing or like what you look like or like what your role is that would suggest to people you would be A, B, C, and D. But when they get to know you more, it's like you're the spitfire and you are like, you send shocks through people's system. Like you shock people literally with this lightning bolt. You shock people. Um, but again, it's like the buffalo represents a being that has like their hooves on the ground, but they're like their head's their head is in the heavens, so to speak. So it's like, you're very grounded. You're very on earth, but at the same time, like you have big dreams, you have big aspirations. You're very, you're much so a visionary, right? You're like, you're, you guys are an earth angel. You see what life could be. You see where, um, you see how humanity could be thriving on this side. We have, you know, um, I feel like a depiction of people would expect you to get very like an emotionally charged, charged situations people would almost expect you to retreat and not know what to do and to maybe ask other people what should i do but what really happens is you turn to your higher self and you um run things through your own system you run things through your own analysis of like what is, is this in alignment with my core values is this in alignment is this what actually makes sense and am i making decisions from a, from a place of peace and not from a place of fear and a place of scatteredness, right? And so I feel like while your emotions are involved in what you do and like your emotional guidance system, your heart has to be open, you don't let those overwhelm you um, to the extent that for whatever reason people might expect you to. And I don't know why there's like this such this expectation because it's not even like necessarily a bad thing. I feel like people... Um, assume you to be someone that is very fulfilled, right? Very fulfilled and um, knows what they want, knows where they're going, knows what's right for themselves, knows what they do and do not stand up for. I feel like just in terms of actually standing up for that and actually living your life from that level versus just like, what is it called? Like virtue signaling, when it's like, I'm going to say all of these things, but you know, I'm actually, I'm not actually going to do that, that type of like hypocritical way of living. It's like, you actually um, mean what you say and you say what you mean. And that just might surprise people because that <laughs> I guess is like few and far between on this, you know, on this planet. Yeah. People expect you to be much more swayed by your emotions than I feel like you actually are. And I feel like people also might assume that what you do is more self-serving than they can actually even recognize. I feel like you have gotten to a point, pal number three, where you trust yourself. You understand that like when you're making decisions that feel right for you and I feel like naturally you guys are just, you have like this pack mentality where you know, you're not going to leave anyone behind. And that comes along with this emperor type of energy. The emperor has everyone's best interest involved, right? A true emperor, an empowered emperor. And so I feel like because you have such trust in the higher realm, such trust in your divinity, this is like the most spiritual earth card there is, right? Because you have such trust in a higher sense of self, uh, you understand that when you're following those nudges that spirit sends you, that has the best of intentions of everyone involved or that has the best, uh, what is it? 
like everyone is being looked at looked out for and my only job is to really tune into what feels holistically right for me right when i'm honoring my puzzle piece when i'm honoring my role um that is being you know that is essentially the perfect piece in the divine plan of everything when i'm honoring that i can be sure that i'm going to play the part for whatever people in whatever way that people need me to play that part and it's done so with integrity it's done so with love it's done so with compassion and so you're not as swayed by your emotions as people would think but you still you, you still have your heart open which is re really important into being such a powerful you know wielding as much power as that you guys have And I, I feel like you just are an individual. You guys never give up. Like, you never give up. And when, when you could settle, when you could be like, okay, I could just like, I, I could be completely fine. I could be completely fulfilled at this level that I'm at, you know, whatever. I feel like you guys are always pushing on. You're always looking for the next thing. Not out of a sense of lack, but out of a sense of um, evolution. And what else, why else am I here? And this is what the journey is for. It's... Um, you know, to not always know where we're being led, but to see how the better it gets, the better it gets. And it only gets better when I'm leaning into that direction, when I'm leaning in the direction of following my excitement, of following what sets me free. What's interesting is I just noticed these are all like people, right? Court cards and um, major arcana. And so it's interesting because I don't necessarily think this is like what people expected of you was negative at all. Like it's again, like I started off saying it's very similar energy, but like there's so much more power that is actually seen and felt. It's like, you know, if people like just like see your work online or something, or they just like see you online, I feel like the energy comes across very diluted than if they were in person. And then when they get in person with you, it's like, holy fuck, like it's almost overwhelming because the power, you know, the punch that you pack is so powerful. And again, it's like people, you know, the, the only thing that's really throwing off about, you know, um, expectation versus reality, I guess, is that, um, you know, the, the hermit and the emperor just lead in different ways. And I feel like the level of peace that the hermit embodies is like, what people would expect you to embody is like the hermit type of energy you know peace and the hermit type of energy kind of go hand in hand but it's a different type of peace and power that is emanated and emulated i should say with this buffalo and emperor card right so you're definitely delivering people a different idea of like what it means like i'm just getting someone that you know if you watch shows like like vikings or something you know when they can deliver such cutthroat, like witty remarks back and forth that hold so much power of like, you know, I'm not someone you want to fuck with. And they could say it just like so calm and so peacefully, but you know, they're, you, you know, you don't want to fuck with this person. They just communicated in the most peaceful, <laughs> nonchalant way, like try me and I will, you know, I will kill you. Okay. Kind of thing. That's what I'm getting. Not that you guys would, you know, bear with me. And I'm just saying that you guys like, are so peaceful but you know there's a side to you that is also just as powerful and i feel like you're not holding that back you're not um it's not wouldn't be too much of a surprise um once people really start, start to get to know you you know that they're asking for whatever that they end up getting with you whatever honesty they get from you whatever uh, wisdom they get from you whatever you know compassion whatever upgrading they get from you there's no surprise at the end of the day because you know it's like it was there but just like not to the extent and the capacity and the power that you know they had anticipated so pile number three i'm gonna leave this reading here for now this was really fun i hope this brought clarity confirmation peace to your heart if it did at the very least give this video a thumbs up uh leave like a little bowl comment down below a bowl emoji a buffalo if we have that uh yeah and i hope to see you soon hey pile four if you guys chose the cheetah this is your reading for what surprises people about you so we're gonna dive right into this just so you guys know this how i'm kind of separated this this is kind of like the surprise and this is the expectation or just this will give me more details of why this is such a surprise okay so I feel like what surprises people about you is you have a tendency of 
overcoming a lot in a short amount of time. I'm getting a lot about perseverance and strength coming through with both the cheetah and, um, you know, obviously the strength card. Um, but then these are both fire cards, which, you know, to me is all about the path of purification and the path of becoming your best self, right? The path of transformation. And so I feel like you guys have just overcome a lot of feeling left out, rejected, um, not good enough, uh, not fitting in, like very misfit type of energy um, and very misunderstood, honestly. And I feel like there's been a lot like you haven't sold your soul, okay? You haven't sold your soul in the process of um, discovering who it is that you came here to be right? Because, you know, we have the devil in the start. To me, in this spread in particular, just kind of gives me the idea of things that are flashy, things that are shiny. Like, you could have very well have, you know, been given a lot of opportunities that would draw you in a direction that could still be good on some level, but on a deeper level, it would feel like you were selling out on what you were truly here for. And so, on one hand, while the path that you've decided to take might not always look the most glamorous. It might not always make the most sense to the most amount of people. It's what actually feels right to you. And it's what's actually allowed you to tame your own beast, so to speak. So in other words, that's another way of saying it's allowed you by you taking a bet on your life. You're actually taking, um, you know, you've, you've said yes to the hero's journey. Whereas the hero's journey is offered to all of us when we take birth, right? It's like, am I just, am I going to just go along with things? Or am I gonna do, am I gonna be one of those characters in the storyline that, you know, if something doesn't feel right, I'm not gonna go with it. And I'm gonna go my own way. And I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna fight for what I believe in. I'm gonna fight for what's right. And so, you know, that is a, a journey, that is a path that can be honestly very hard because you do get rejected by family. You get you do get locked out, you know? You do get misunderstood, you do get called crazy, you do get all of these things, but you know, at least it's not at the cost for selling your soul to fit in, right? And so I feel like, um, I feel like the, what people maybe expected, um, like the reason why this is such a surprise is because a lot of people do take this path, right? A, there are many people that, you know, for whatever reason, don't know how to break out of their own karmic propensities, right? So I feel like too, there might be things that run in your family lineage, like addictions or ways of being or like mental health things or like it seems like you know you have really taken a much different path than like i feel like people almost wonder if they were in your shoes if they could have if they would have ended up in the same position as you in terms of i think they're quite inspired and quite um in awe of how you go about life, even if they don't always, if it, even if it doesn't always make sense, and even if the way you live your life triggers them, because it, it trigger, it's so different. Because it, it triggers them to look at aspects of their own life where they took the bait of accepting something, you know, that was maybe not up to par with what their higher self or what their heart really wanted. But it's because it was just, you know, what was there, or you know, what seemed bright and shiny, and um, it's what everyone else was doing. And so this is really a beautiful, this paints a beautiful picture of like, you know, not all that glitters is gold. And what seems like is, you know, what some people see as being one thing, um, you know, I just use this analogy in a, in a different group, but, you know, living in a van might seem very destitute and dissolute and just like not ideal for some people, but for others, that's like a dream come true. So that's the type, type of level of just like in your own way, the type of, um, like unorthodox and unusual what's the word i'm really looking for um like unconventional way of living and just seeing the world right versus like taking the bait of like okay i'm supposed to have a job by this and this time i'm supposed to be married my family life is supposed to look like this like a b c and d but like at what cost you know because we we undo our karma through a willingness to grow right we undo our karma not for paying things back right or like having to, you know, relive a lifetime where someone else is doing to us everything that we've done. It's like, you can, you know, for some people it takes, it can probably take lifetimes, right, to heal karma. And some people it just takes a moment to heal karma. It's just a willingness to grow and a willingness to see something differently. And I feel like you guys have really seen things very differently and you have a lot of momentum on your side. Um, 
yeah, y'all don't fuck around, okay? There's so much transformative power over here. And I feel like what people expected is just um, why it's such a surprise is because I feel like they don't understand or it's hard for people to understand that how much goes into becoming a very solid and sound person and a person of like character and a person of stability. It doesn't look like this. It, 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 it shouldn't look like this because, you know, I, we tend to see that when there's no, this type of struggle and this type of thing that we end up with like phony ass teachers and, you know, narcissistic ass leaders and people that really are just like, you know, not about it, not about that life. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like there's a, a, a big sense of stability that, that comes through for you guys in a, in a huge sense of humility that when things do like inevitably start picking up for you, because I do feel like, you know, there is a lot of, um, I do feel like there is a lot of prosperity in your life already and to come. If yeah, some of you guys are going to be at different levels of this journey, but I feel like, um, you, wherever you guys are at, it's like you have surprised people and how much you are proving them to be wrong in this, not because you want to prove them wrong, but because like, I feel like some, you know, people are so trapped in their idea of what life is supposed to be like. It's such, it's such an unexplored life over here. Okay. Um, that, you know, it's so, it's so unexplored and unquestioned and just like blind faith, blind faith doesn't even have to do with spirituality or religion, right? Faith is whatever you will just like, whatever you believe in without needing to be proved otherwise. All right. That's faith. And we have so much, there are so many people that live in blind faith to things that they wouldn't even be able to acknowledge because their ego would crumble <laughs> to have even the possibility of acknowledging how much they are blindly, faithfully believing in things. But I feel like you have actually questioned the nature of reality and you will have set off on a path to not prove yourself. You have set off on a path that you really want to live a life that is well lived, to live a life that uh, you're proud of, to live a life where uh, you didn't take the easy way out and you really are someone that you are proud of. You could already feel you're growing into your paws, so to speak. I mean, cats are the protector of the spirit world in general. So I feel like you guys are very tuned into something bigger than yourself. But I feel like um, the tenacity and the perseverance and the strength that you guys so clearly emanate has not come easy. All right. And so by choosing easy is where people end up in karma, right? And, and end up in pat non-serving patterns. Like it was Rick, Victor Frankl, the author of Man's Search for Meaning, you know, the Holocaust survivor that wrote a book about it, you know, essentially said, uh, man seeks pleasure to a great extent when man does not have a connection to a higher purpose, right? So man will seek pleasure to the extent that they have not connected with a higher purpose. And I feel like this is not to say that pleasure and joy, et cetera, is negative. Um, but I feel like you didn't, you haven't taken the road of like wanting to band aid. Like you want to get to the deep, to the real root of insecurities, the real root of life. Like you have really asked the hard questions in life that only a life of dif difficulty can truly inspire you, someone to ask. Yeah. I feel like you are, um, I feel like this is a little side note, but like, I feel like you are very attractive too. in many ways, like you are very bold and very magnetic and people are very drawn to you. They probably have already always said this. And I feel like some people think that like they can have it like that, you know, that, you know, you're easy or you could be, or, um, you know, I f I'm just getting the sense that people think that you are giving out what you have to just like everyone right now that everyone has had a little bit of a taste, you know, I'm seeing this almost as like fall, fall out boy, you know, where he says, um, another mark in the bedpost, right? You're just another notch on my bedpost. And then this is like the notches <laughs> coming through to like, ask, can I be a notch? Right? So I feel like in, in some sense, um, whatever it is about, like, there's kind of like a carefree nature and a carefree personality that I'm getting here. Uh, but you're very, like, you're very lighthearted in some senses. Like you've really learned to be that way, but about the right things, 
like you take life seriously, but not too seriously. And I, I feel like there's a lot of people that see you in a certain way or want you in a certain way that they can't have, you know, like, I feel like this would be a group that a lot of people think that you're the one for them. And it's like, you're still out here. Like, is, is there anyone that can match my speed? You know, is there anyone that can match my perseverance? And so this might have been a very lonely road for you guys. Uh, but it, I, I don't feel it will stay that way. I just feel like there is a lot of, um, there's a lot of, you know, because with this type of background can come a lot of healing that needs to happen. And so, you know, of course we don't, in my opinion, don't want to meet someone um, before that healing has happened. And the people that we tend to attract before that healing has happened, you know, are going to be representative of that before the healing has happened energy, you know? And so that's just for, you know, a few select, yeah, many of you guys actually. Yeah, but people expect you to be very showboaty and very like, you know, people expect, I feel like are just surprised at how humble you actually are. Um, yeah, they're, you're very humble. You have a lot that you could, you know, you could brag about. And well, I don't think that, you know, I feel like if, you know, flaunt it, if you got it, there's nothing wrong with that. But I feel like the place that you're coming from is not to make other people feel bad or not to make other people oogle you or whatever. It's just like, I'm feeling good. So, you know, I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna wear this, you know, um, not to show up, but to just like, you know, embody the God or the goddess that you are and to, you know, have a devotion to your avatar and the devotion to your life, you know, but I feel like you're, you're not showboaty. You're not very like all in people's face. Look at me, look at me. Uh, you're very humble and you come from humble, you know, humble beginnings is, is what has kept you there. Yeah. I'm hearing that you offer a gift of people's own projections, um, which I guess we all do in our, in our own ways, but I feel like um, what you embody is very different from maybe, I don't know. I feel like you trigger people's deepest fantasies or their deepest fears, their deepest desires, their deepest insecurities, their deepest question marks. I feel like uh, not, you know, not even by trying, it's just because you've really learned that, you know, I have to uniquely be me. Um, and by being uniquely me, a lot of the times that means looking very different from what other people are being. And again, that's taking the road less traveled. And so you really hold a mirror up to other people, so to speak, and where they're not doing that, where they're not living their best life, you know, where they're not living a life that truly honors um, the depths of who they are and the extent of who they came here to be. Yeah, but overall, what surprises people is um, just how far you've come. Again, that came through in the beginning, how far you've come in a short amount of time. And I honestly feel like people are just in awe of your journey and who you're becoming. Um, and I feel like everyone is always like, a lot of people are always like checking in on you and like wanting to see what's up with you just because you continue to surprise people. Um, you really do continue to surprise people and keep shining pile. Number four, it was such an honor and a gift reading for you today. If this brought clarity, peace, confirmation to your heart, please give this video a thumbs up. If you chose this pile today, maybe put a star in the comment section, um, or a cheetah or a lion or something, maybe a lion. Yeah. Hell yeah. A lion. And, uh, yeah, I hope to see you soon, pal four.